You might have had a hard day, and yes, we do have hard days in television, but if you're a new immigrant or a tourist, there could be an entirely different interpretation on it. And that's what's worrying Heather McAllister. She sees and hears it all the time. Our Kiwi slang perplexing those not so familiar with it. And after conducting his own experiment, Matt Chisholm believes Heather's on to something. Kelly, did you catch the ABs at the weekend, bro? I'm not sure why I talk to you about <laughs> After that meal, are you feeling knackered? Yes, a little bit, yeah. Yep. Why is that? Um, I, I'm just, it was too spicy, actually. I hope that's what you mean. <laughs> you talk something naked. I understood that word. <laughs> something naked? Yeah, yeah, you talked, I think, that. No, nothing <laughs> but, naked. But you talked. No, hey, where are you going but, with this? But you used that word. <laughs> but you used that word. <laughs> I didn't use the word naked. Yeah, you used it. Sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. Yeah, even for people who have been living in an English-speaking environment, um, they're not familiar with the, the um, New Zealand accent, and in particular, all the little Kiwi expressions. Is he Dag's hard case, eh? Hey? Oh, God. <laughs> what, 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 are you, what are you trying to say? It can be a source of fun. Sometimes, you know, you can have a great laugh about it, but sometimes it can be a little frustrating. Do you feel naked? No. <laughs> can you use the word naked? <laughs> so, <laughs> you used it I, and I understood it. Naked right. and knackered. It's the same thing. I naked, I am tired. I don't understand. Naked, me. I have no clothes on. No, that's right. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Some say that we're New Zealanders. We Kiwis. Use far too much slang. We're talking to migrants and tourists. It's also been suggested that it's scaring them off. Community involvement. A situation this woman sees far too often. I help migrants settle into the community and into the workplace. Heather McAllister, the Settlement Support Coordinator at the Rotorua District Council, has called on her community to talk slower and use less slang when talking to migrants and tourists. What are the common phrases we use? Oh, yeah. Chirp, brew, beat, and you know, stuff like that, just little things. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Communication is a, a two-way process, and from what I see, migrants are, are really putting in a big effort, and it's just been mindful to just do your 50%. We need to pull our finger out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just watch where you're putting it. <laughs> Is there a risk associated with talking too slowly? Yeah, totally. You sound like a moron. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> While some rode through a local scene to get it, generally the ones who rely on tourists for their bread and butter. I do try to talk slower because you put yourself in their situation. Others are going to be tougher nuts to crack. Hey, I think we talk already. Yeah, I think, I think they're slow. <laughs> Rather than we talk too fast, I think they think too slow. <laughs> I reckon we should just stick to how we talk and, well, if they can't understand us, maybe they should go back to where they come from. <laughs> I've given up on the general public. Enter former radio and television presenter and now voice coach, David England, who's a bit of a stickler for the rules. The trouble with most Kiwis, they speak so fast that everything's in a straight line, nothing's standing out. If you speak fast, then your pitch is going to go right up into the head and this sort of thing. And then also it affects clarity. Well, chumping at the bit, eh? Can you talk a bit slower? We don't use too much slang. It's just that it's no use using it on migrants. They simply will not have an idea of what you're talking about. Because if you say, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm a box of birds. Box of birds? Migrants really want to be able to use those expressions themselves. So should we be using slang or shouldn't we? I think it's really up to the situation and the people you're talking to. Um, just really assess it and pick up, uh, up on all the body language and visual cues. Sweet. Now that we've got that sorted, what else really gets oh, under definitely. David's skin? We distort our vowels before letter, poor old letter L, and we talk about Wellington, Nelson and Melbourne, and we talk about health, wealth and welfare. We can't pronounce an E-L. And with I-Ls, once again, uh, you know, you're getting a bottle of milk, and at the checkout, you sometimes get... That's the Kiwi rising inflection at the end of a sentence, which I call really the Kiwi rising infection. For example, we've got this lovely apartment by the beachfront for you, and we've got uh, three optional payments for you. You're going to love it. And especially amongst our younger generation, we also love the word like. He's written this caption that says, he was like, how's your father? I was like, mind your own business. 
but we were like being real full-on friendly, really. I was like, who would understand? What's this I was like business, you see? While that may be confusing for some, one thing's for certain. <laughs> when it comes to talking to tourists and migrants, with the right attitude, you'll have a lot of fun trying. So when I said it's hard case, what did you think I meant? I mean, it's a hard case. I thought that's what you meant. No, it's funny. Oh, OK, that's funny. So we laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever say sweet ass? No, not very much. Do you ever say bro? Yes. <laughs> Throw it at me. Bro. Cuz. <laughs> and I'm sure it's a great relief to you that I'm merely knackered and not naked. Listen, we'll be across things here at the High Court tomorrow. For now, though, that is New Zealand. Close up.